everyone and namaste. Welcome to AA Probably. I am Akshita Sharma, your instructor for the course of data science and machine learning series. Today, we will be looking at a really interesting topic in this series. We will be looking at what recommended systems are and its types. Then we will be defining item-based recommendation systems, demographic-based, content-based, popularity-based, correlation and collaborative-based recommended systems. Then we will be looking at how machine learning algorithms can be used in recommender systems. There are a lot of algorithms that can be used, but we will be using logistic regression today. Then we will be looking into SVD and how do we evaluate a model's accuracy based on collaboration. And then finally, we will be looking at how encoding can be applied to this. By the end of this video, we will be able to predict a new data set and predict a new data entry and say whether the student would be placed or not. So we have a data set which includes the 10th marks card, the 10, 12th degree marks and the post-graduation marks along with the course or stream they have taken. And here when we say that the array is equal to 1, that means the student is placed. If the array said 0, that means the student wouldn't be placed. So after this module, you would be able to know the types of recommended systems, build your own recommendation system, use logistic regression and XGB boosting on recommended systems. Evaluate the model's accuracy and efficiency, perform classification and encoding on recommender systems on a new data set. So, let's jump into knowing what recommender system means. What would a recommender system mean according to a layman? So, a layman's definition would be a system that recommends something to a user based on their choice or selection or taste. They are primarily used in commercial systems like Netflix, Amazon, Flipkart, YouTube, Spotify, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and a lot of social sites. The goal of recommender system is to basically generate meaningful recommendation to collection of users for items or products that might interest them. We can have single inputs like music or books, or can have multiple inputs like clothes, groceries, movies, and so on. The recommender-based systems can be classified as collaborative and content-based filtering where in content, the system utilizes a series of items in order to recommend additional items with similar properties. Whereas in collaborative-based filtering, the system analyzes the user's part, or choice, part of choices and compares it to other users and then gives in suggestions to what the user might like. Let's first look at item-based filtering. Item-based filtering is another way of collaborative-based filtering. In here, we can see that how in a few people who like frames, books, laptops, and controller. So we have to predict whether a person who liked frame and books and disliked the controller would like a laptop or not. So by the collection of the previous data or the previous users who have had similar choices, they didn't actually like a laptop and hence the system wouldn't recommend a laptop to the other person. So this system was first built by Amazon in 1998 as it had and they realized that this collaborative based filtering had less error compared to user user collaborative based filtering which used nearest neighbor collaborative filtering approach which we'll be looking at in further video. Now let's have a look at demographic based recommender system. So this system aims to classify the users based on attributes and make recommendation based on demographic values. Many companies have tried this approach and it's pretty easy to implement. In this, we first need to collect a proper data set from the real world data as we saw in the other video, which involved data sourcing. We then categorize this data. It is similar to the people-people collaboration, but it doesn't require a history of the users like we would in content and collaborator-based filtering. Now, let's look at Content based recommender systems. It is mainly classified as an outgrowth and continuation of information filtering. In this system, the objects are mainly identified by their features. A content based recommender system learns a profile of a new user, in user's interest based on the features present in objects the user has rated. It's basically a keyword specific recommender system, hence, keywords are used to de describe the items. Then, in a content-based recommender system, the algorithm used are such that it recommends similar users, similar items that the user has used in the past or liked. 
or is examining currently. Here, in simple words, we can take Netflix or Amazon Prime as an example for this. For this recommender system, let's say, the videos that was suggested by Amazon or Netflix said you have a 97% match. That doesn't mean that this match is to a movie, but instead, it means that the content you're watching and its suggested movie or series would be of your interest, as it is liked by people who have watched this as well before or after watching what you are currently watching. We can see an example here of Netflix series, which says that a girl has watched three movies and a guy who has watched two out of three movies, then the girl of the girl has watched. So the one movie which, which is watched by the girl and not by the guy would be recommended to the guy as well. Now let's see what this popularity based system mean. As the name suggests, popularity based recommender system works with a trend. It's basically the items which are on trend right now. For example, let's take Instagram. If there is a page on Instagram liked by many users, and then when a new user would sign up, it will be the first, it will be suggested to a user, to the new user as well. The same goes on with stories and reels on Instagram. So this is how a user's profile is recommended to a new user. Let's see what is correlation based recommendation system. Let's have a guess here. It is the recommendation based on correlation. Yes, you're absolutely right. This is nothing but just how two variables can be related to each other. These systems are based on how similar the choices are. It's done by a Pearson's coefficient and the value would range from minus one to plus one. If the value turns out to be plus one, then it is positive and it would be highly recommended to the other user. And if it's minus one, it turns out to be negative correlation and it wouldn't be recommended to the other user. Here, we can see that A likes a camera, laptop and printer, B likes a camera and a printer and C likes a laptop and a camera. So if D buys a camera, would a printer be recommended to D? Yeah. But based on Pearson's constant, it, the value would come out to be between zero to plus one. And hence, D would also be recommended a camera. So the more closer the value moves to zero, the lesser would be the linear dependency on the variable. Let's now see of how can we classify the data. We will be using logistic regression on the data set. So what is logistic regression? Logistic regression is nothing but the supervised learning classification algorithm used to predict the probability of a target variable. The nature of the target or dependent variable is dichotomous, which means there would be only two possible classes. It is used for classification problems and it is predictive analysis algorithm and based on the concept of probability. The hypothesis of the logistic regression tends to, it to be the limit between a cost function which is 0 to 1. So let's see on how we can apply logistic regression on the data set. So to first perform the data set, we will import the data. So we have the files uploaded. We have the CSV file uploaded. And we'll import the data set. And then we train the data set. We just see the head of the data set. So it involves gender, the 10th marks, the 10th board, the 12th board and the marks, and the degree involved, and the specialization the person has done in MBA, whether and the status whether he was placed or not. And then moving on to this data. So first we prepare the final data set, we train the data, and after training the data, we split it into train and test module. And then we're going to perform logistic regression on the data set. We'll be explaining this in the further modules. And then after performing this logistic regression, we would see the accuracy of the model. So here we say, we take a standard scalar and we put the train function and we split it into train and text test function and we perform logistic regression and fit the training and the test data of the x and the y axis 
and then we do the logistic prediction, logistic regression and predict the data on the x data set. So y train is the data to be predicted. So here, when the data is predicted, the logistic regression, logistic model accuracy would be 81%. Now let's see how finally we have collaborative based filtering. So in this is the most sought after filtering implemented and the most mature technologies in the market right now. Collaborative recommended system aggregate ratings or recommendation of objects, recognize commonalities between the users based on their ratings and generate a new recommendation based on inter-user comparison. The greatest strength of collaborative filtering is that they are completely independent of any machine readable representation of objects being recommended or work well for complex objects where variation in taste are responsible for much of the variation in preferences. Collaborative filtering is based on the assumption that people who agreed in the past will agree in the future and they will like similar kind of objects as they liked in the past. They can also be classified as model based or memory based filtering. So memory based algorithm approaches the collaborative filtering problem by using the entire database. It tries to find users that are similar to the active users and use their preferences to predict ratings to the active user. It uses the nearest neighbor method. So the advantages of a memory based approach would be it is easy to create and understanding the result of a memory based approach is pretty easy for the user. While the disadvantage would be as it uses a sparse matrix in a memory based approach, it has a lot of empty data. Coming down to a model-based collaborating filtering algorithm provides its recommendation by first developing a model of the user ratings. Algorithms in this category take a probabilistic approach and re recursion of the collaborative filtering process as computing the expected value of a user prediction gives his or her ratings on the other items. The advantages of this would be as the dimensionality can be reduced or the missing data can be dealt with easily in this model-based approach. But the disadvantage would be due to some intractable or hidden factors, it is inference. Here we have an example of memory based algorithm. This is an algorithm. We can take it as an example for Amazon. So when we build a profile on Amazon and we do and we shop for certain items, so the system constructs a user item matrix. And then we compute the similarity measures with the previous users or the active users based on the taste. It then constructs a decision matrix. And after this, they calculate whether they should recommend the other items to us or not. Whereas in a model based collaborative filtering, we have here we first gather the data set and the user rating matrix is formed. After the matrix is formed, the empty or the sparse data set is filled up and after the data is filled up, it's then compared to the other data sets with the nearest neighbors. And after comparing them, we have a user rating matrix, which is used for rating prediction. After the rating prediction, it's then with the item information is collected. And after the rating prediction and item information is then merged and checked if the item would be recommended or that is recommended would be liked by the user or not. Now, Let's have SVD. SVD is a singular value decom decomposition that takes a rectangular matrix of gene expression data. A, which is an M cross N matrix, which are the genes, and N is the experimental condition. A is equal to S, U into S into V transpose, uh, where the columns of U are singular vectors and S has the same dimensions of A and is, a, and is diagonal. V transpose has rows that are the right singular vectors. The SVD represents an algorithm of the original data in a coordinate system, whereas the covariance matrix is diagonal. Now let's have a look on how do we evaluate whether the model is acceptable or not. In this process, the model's accuracy is evaluated on uh, untrained data or a new data set, and the accuracy of the model is completely based on precision and recall. So precision is nothing but how relevant the recommendations are. It's the, it can be calculated by the ratio of the items liked by the user by the items recommended by the user. And recall is how did the system satisfy the user or how accurate were their recommendations. 
So this can be calculated by taking the ratio of the items that are recommended and liked by the user by the items to the ratio of the items that are liked. Here, we have a training data set and when we train the data on a machine learning algorithm and create a new model, and then we input a new data set, which is called a test data. When this is implemented on the machine learning algorithm together and a prediction is made, it's then evaluated whether the person would actually like it or not. If it's disliked by the user or not acceptable, it's again sent for the whole process of the training. It's again sent for training and the whole process is performed until the model is accepted. Let's check categorical encoding. Categorical data is a common type of non-commercial data that contains label values and not numbers. Example, hot, cold, warm, and very hot. There are two types of encoding. So here first we have one hot encoding and label encoding. But here we can say hot, cold, and very hot and warm as we can label them as one, two, and three, and four. And then they are moved down to the binary data set that says one can be written as 0, 0, and 1, 2 can be said 0, 1, 0, 3 can be written as 0, 1, 1, and 4 can be written as 1, 0, 0. And then this binary data set is then split up into temperature underscore 1, 0, and 2. And then it is predicted. So this makes it easier for the machine to understand the temperature. Let's look into one hot encoding first. One hot encoding is a process by which categorical variables are converted into a form that could be provided by the ML algorithm to do a better job in prediction. The number of category features is so less that one hot encoding can be effectively applied. You can have an example of red, red, yellow, and green. So we have red in the first data set. So we have here red, and then it says red is one, yellow is zero, and green is zero. So we don't we have the color of red. And when we have the color of yellow, we can see it says red is zero, yellow is one, and green is zero. And where we have green, it says red is zero, yellow is zero, and green is one. Let's move on to label encoding. So label encoding refers to converting the labels into numeric form so as to convert it into a machine readable form. Machine learning algorithm can then decide in a better way on how these labels must be operated. So this is an example of label encoding on a hot encoding can be converted to label encoding and vice versa. We can say apple is one, chicken is two, broccoli is three. So the categorical is categories are then split up as apple can be said as one and chicken is zero and broccoli is zero. But in the second set where chicken is two, we can say it to be zero and apple zero, chicken is one and broccoli is zero again. And where broccoli is three, we can say apple is zero, chicken is zero and broccoli is one. So folks, the video ends here. So if you're new to this channel, please subscribe and hit that bell icon for notifications. Thank you.